apart from bowel prep and obstruction, I really can't remember that we've had any failures of sequence integration. Okay. And the same applies to the ACP. And the same applies to the ACP. We have done now uh, almost Six. 140 fetal uh -huh. ACPs. And of those 140 years, it is we have failed in a single candidate. So, what's the so, common practice here regarding bowel preparation? Okay, uh, after preparation, uh, what do we use? I use phosphate based uh, uh, solutions okay. which are given about 6 to 8 hours apart. Uh, I think it's uh, very important for patients to understand that they. More, in my experience, more clear fluids and avoiding things like guava and their seeds and all those things yeah, are very important. Clear fluids start six hours before or twenty-four. Okay, hours? clear fluids I start twenty-four. Yeah. So twenty-four hours before clear fluids start with that, and then I give them a colonoscopy solution. Let's say, for example, we're doing one in the morning. Then I give them a colonoscopy solution at about you know about noon. Yeah, lifetime one solution and then repeat it at six o'clock and then they continue with the clear fluid the next morning they come. If it's in the evening, then I usually give them a colonoscopy solution uh, in the evening, like today, and then the next one is a little later in the morning and then we do it. So there's no anima involved in this preparation? Anima, what I tell them is that anima, especially hospitalized patients, in my experience, hospitalized patients have poorer bar prep than the ones that have it at home. Uh, I don't know why. That is the throw the world. So and that's probably because they okay. just, they are not so careful as they are. But I tell them if you see clear water coming out, then it's okay. But if you don't, then just give you, especially elderly, sometimes I prefer having enema because I can't rely on it. But generally I don't. So regarding the safety of the colonoscopy solution, how safe do you think it is? I don't think have, have, if you have any medical issues, there is no issue generally, but if there is somebody who is elderly, who is frail, who has issues with walking, you don't want to give them a solution which is going to require them to go to, to the toilet like six times or eight times or ten times, whatever it is. And there, I, what I would occasionally do is admit them in the hospital and do it because A, we don't want them getting dehydrated, B, I don't want them, especially there is no if there is a strong family support, I tell them beforehand that this is what will happen. If you can't manage, then we can... Uh, we can, we, we, can are, we are worried about syncopal attacks and... Uh, syncopal attacks, of course, if they are on their own, then they should be. Yeah. What, what if we have a 70-year-old guy with diabetes colitis and some nephropathy? Well, nephropathy is different. 70 is not old, depending on 70, how fit 70. Like we just defined 70 as a limit. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about it's not about 70 or 80. It's biological. It's about a person coming to you walking fit 80, playing golf. And he's I'm gonna treat him pretty similar to a person who's walk who walks to my clinic at the age of 55 or 50. But if somebody comes in who has difficulty when you when he when he or she arrives in your clinic with walking, has issues with Disability, has arthritis, has diabetes, has got renal issues. Now you are adding everything and the risks. So, I mean, I don't think there is any harm admitting them. At least I give them the option. If the family support is very strong, they don't have to. If there is some kind of renal impairment, what would be the colonoscopy preparation? Well, then I use basically, I go back to the old uh, colac system. I use that. You know, so, no polyethylene like this. I don't use it because A, you know, the availability, B, drinking that much fluid, and I don't think I'm not, I'm not too sure if somebody who's got renal failure. But I think the, and I use enema there as well. So, Dulcolax and enema is what I go for. I don't know what you do. Have no we used like what other? First how, how much Dulcolax? But you use that as standard now. It's available here. So, we have to make it while Sasha is good. No, the Sasha is the market. But the issue is that now it's available here, it's not even that expensive, but I think the problem with that is the amount of fluid that you have. They have compared 2 litre with 4 litre and they found 2 litre as effective as 4 litre. That's true, because we will make this in 6 litre data, we will see what's still in a different data. So, movie prep dress, that is 2 litre. Clean prep, 
as that is for as effective as for as effective as for because they can probably a price for them to be drinking too little even is I, I think we we've, we've been contemplating and, and forgetting every time but we need we, we discuss this doing a trial here in our setting uh, between between the two systems, the one that we are already using versus the thing. Um, and it can easily be done. It's just that every time I sit in the what course, I remember. And then after the course, I forget. So how was your experience regarding that experiment? No, no, I haven't done it. I said that's something that we, every time I sit here, I remember. And then by the time the course ends, we go on to the next course because I've got, while I'm doing this, I'm actually, we are actually planning the US. And we've just done an ERC. So it's just last month. So it becomes, and so you remember this idea. I thought the company also came. They said we'd be very keen. Um, so that's something anybody can do. Um, well, that's what we do. I don't think. Uh, generally speaking, bal prep is not bad, but uh, I feel that the bal prep is better. Broad. Even when we use phosphate. Uh, Based on the like Nicolex. So, standard goes with the two sachets. So, two sachets is not effective. So, if you have a lot of money, you can get three sachets. And you can send a pot. Up to six tablets or seven pot. Make it more effective. But three solutions uh, that we use. I know the language. Yeah, but the only problem is that, you know, like you said, then you're making life difficult for the guy. Has anybody taken bowel prep himself or herself? I have taken it. And uh, you know, you end up going quite a few times. It's not good. It's not, it's not something that, it, it's obviously there's a difference between disease diarrhea and this. Yeah, this, this is obviously not as bad, but you do feel hungry and you do, uh, so what I, what I, it was and I think it worked and I tell my patients because you know, you feel hungry. So chicken corn soup, I, everything is okay except the corn. So grind the corn, that's what I tell my patients. Yes. Grind the corn completely so the paste becomes thick and it actually doesn't affect the bowel. What about milk? What about milk? I'm really no, not sure milk makes a big no, difference. I'm not some controversy regarding milk and milk. I'm I'm probably we advise them not to take dairy products. But but generally, Amara yeta. But whether that makes a difference in the bowel, I'm really not convinced. Is it the fat content of the milk or the dairy product that delays the empty growth? Obi, I just want to do regulation or other that you know milk to three. But I don't know. I don't know with the amount of solution and the number yeah, of times yeah. you're going with the milk will yeah. have what is one half a glass of milk would have yeah. so much of a difference or yes um chai mein, milk to chalo bahut to make it but chai mein, you know, people will say uh, you know, don't put milk i don't uh, think it makes i it. don't think it would make a difference though it is all written on our instruction by the way it's very important i think clear fluids do make a difference but it's food that kills it. secondly to they have these all these vegetables uh, you know they have because it's the last supper yeah. <laughs> so that, that approach actually Plus, seeds are and a killer. Oh, 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 becomes a valve. So I, you suck it, comes and block. You put the air, the, it opens up again. So it's a, uh, the guava seeds are, are a nice. So we advise them to not eat multi seed bread for a few days, for five days. I think it's, I tell them now clearly, by the way. Don't take a look. <laughs> These melon challenges are okay because they, even if you suck them, they will not go through the challenge. Yes, yeah, so that It affects the, they would have exactly the same <laughs> yeah. So we were discussing uh, anti platelets and anti coagulants and Yeah, I know. So, so regarding any lower limit of platelet count while taking biopsy, it's a 
page by asking that it will be considered as safe procedure. For taking biopsy, as far as I remember, and the latest guidelines actually do not stop you. They are not. Even sure. even with even if somebody is actually on anticoagulation, it doesn't, it doesn't stop. stop you from taking it. Biopsy. Okay. They will bleed, but that bleeding is self-limited, so don't you don't have to panic. So you're taking mucosal biopsies, right? It's common sense which should have come many, many years ago. It came a little late. What is it going to do? So if a patient, if the person is not directly related to the topic, but if a patient is bleeding actively per rectum, and we are going to scope him and he has a cardiac issue, high risk issue, and he is taking dual antiplatelet. So what would make no difference? It's an emergency. Number one, this yeah. is a difference. There is yeah. somebody bleeding, right? Yeah, so now, now that becomes a priority, right? So, so a lot of things you have to change. Both the antiprogramms? You don't have time. That's why I'm emphasizing. You're saying that you should die from that. If the bleeding is so bad that you can't wait, then you don't care about what medicine so I there. Went, I went in and I found a lesion and I have treated it endoscopically. Now oh. I'm out. Patient is stable, hemodynamic. He is maintaining his blood pressure, vitals, everything. So what to do with antiplatelets now? Well, then, then I call the cardiologist and ask him, depending on why, how soon, how, what kind of stent was placed. So it was uh, a high risk condition three no. months ago, six months ago. If the, if the cardiologist will guide you there. They can, they tell me quite often you don't need to have both. Yeah. And I will tell them, you know, how That's much right. time do you want? And I said seven days is all I want. That's right. Maybe my, my cardiologist uh, was saying that you can start with clopidogrel and you can stop as well. Oh, no, no, no. So I think you, you can know. have okay, one of them is okay. Which one? Aspirin is Aspirin is safer. Aspirin is safer. But again, but I don't think that that's really evidence based. Because you know what? case, with escort, aspirin, and other antiplegates, you to do a trial and prove that this is better or not, the numbers are so small that you have to really look at a huge number of cases. This is based more on theoretical evidence than actually practical evidence. Like a lot of people are saying aspirin, I guess the guidelines in Regarding aspirin, or if you are going for an intervention, patient is not actively bleeding and he is taking two drugs, so you can continue with the aspirin yes. rather than clopidogrel. So it doesn't make aspirin safer than clopidogrel. But aspirin is more uh, ulcerogenic, I guess. Being ulcerogenic, you are talking We are not talking about ulcerogenesis. We are talking about the effect of bleeding, right? So now they are saying if the patient is actually bleeding, which is a totally different scenario, you went in and you have scoped the patient, yeah, you, have stopped the, you have stopped the bleeding, you have applied triple modalities, then there is no fun in stopping that drug. You can start straight away. Bleeding. Both the drugs. Both, both, both the drugs. Both the after you stopped the bleeding in ulcer? Uh, in lower GI, there was a pathology and you have... The lower GI is very effective. And what about upper GI, sir? Upper GI, personally, I think I'll have to stop both. If, even if you have applied three modalities. You have applied four modalities, modalities six modalities, I don't care. I would stop it. I, but I, I, I personally, and I'll take Bakar's opinion, I get my cardiologist involved. I'll ask him and ask him to stratify his risk. Okay. And tell me what he And I'll tell him what I want. I would want both the drugs stopped for a week. Both the drugs. Yeah. But look, if you normally do that, if you have a heart attack, so you wouldn't do an endoscopy or any colonoscopy within six weeks of that. Strictly. Yeah. But if somebody who is bleeding after primary coronary intervention, the cardiologist, you can't scope. You can't scope. So you can't scope. You can't scope. Your priorities change. Depending on the scenario. If you are dealing with a bleeding lesion in the colon, so aspirin doesn't cause any alteration in the colon. If you are dealing with a bleeding lesion in the upper GI tract, and if it's an ulcer due to an aspirin, the film common sense dictates that you stop the aspirin. Our PPI is one of the things that we need to do with the hospital, and we need to stop the aspirin. So it depends on the scenario. Yes, if there is an ulcer now, if there is a bleeding lesion, or a dilafoy, or something else, so with that disruption, I think that you give it about a week or so, or any cardiologist or any one would agree with you that yes. Because if you have the mouth of the bleeding, it will be the stand block of the bleeding. You have to look at the priority. It's exactly, if you don't stop those or anti-coagulant during the bleeding episodes, that patient will exsanguinate. You bleed to death.
और अगर उसको हार्ट अटैक हो जाए तो उसको वन इन फिफ्टी या जो भी चांस होगा वन इन हंड्रेड होगा लेकिन उसका बच्चा उसका वहाँ मतलब ऑलमोस्ट हंड्रेड परसेंट है ना Yeah. 